Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we have a special treat for you. We're delving into the world of Japanese folklore. We'll be reading the chilling tale of Bancho Sarayashiki, an eerie yet fascinating ghost story that has been told and retold for generations in Japan. You're about to embark on a journey filled with mystery, fear, and the unexplainable. So, sit back, relax, and let's dive into this haunting world. In the kitchen of Aoyama Shuzen's house in Bancho, the maid Okiku was tidying up the utensils after the New Year's Day celebration. This beautiful but humble maid was working nervously to avoid being chastised by her cold and harsh master and his wife. At that time, the dish that Okiku was handling was the treasured Nanjing Kodachi dish of the master, which consisted of 10 plates. Okiku was washing these plates and carefully wiping each one, before putting it into a box next to her. Suddenly, a large cat came in and grabbed the leftover meat from the meal. In that stingy house, even such leftover meat would be scolded if taken. So Okiku was startled and tried to chase the cat away. In the process, the plate she was holding fell and broke. Okiku was taken aback, but it was too late to undo what had happened. Okiku's face turned pale and she trembled. Okiku-san, did you break something? One of Shuzen's mistresses was there. The mistress came over to Okiku and said, Oh, you've done a terrible thing, but looking at Okiku trembling. She felt sorry for her and said, But even if it's a treasured item, it's just a plate. It's not that big of a deal. You don't have to worry too much. As she was saying this, the lady of the house came out. And as soon as she saw the broken plate in front of Okiku, she grabbed Okiku's hair and started beating her. You audacious wench, how dare you break the master's treasured plate? Tell me, why did you break it? Why did you break the plate? The lady scolded and beat Okiku, and then dragged her to Shuzen's room. Okiku's glossy black hair was scattered, and she was suffering, her shoulders shaking. Master, she has done something terrible. This audacious woman has broken your treasured plate. What? Shuzen's single hand was already on the sword in the sword rack. This insolent woman, cut her down, take her outside. The lady thought it was not. Good to see blood on the pine tree during the new year. But I don't think it's good to defile the new year's pine tree with blood. Then let's do it after the 15th. With that, Shuzen took off his jacket, stood up, suddenly grabbed Okiku's right wrist, went out to the porch, and cut off her middle finger. Okiku fainted, Shuzen looked at her and smiled with satisfaction. Lock this woman somewhere, Okiku's body was lifted lightly by one of the young samurai, and carried to a vacant room in the corner of the kitchen. The fellow maids were watching from a distance, unable to do anything. But as soon as Okiku was put in the room, they all went to take care of her. One bandaged her wound, another fetched water, another brought food. It was genuine sympathy for the pitiful woman. But Okiku did not drink water or eat food and was lost in thought like a dead person. Okiku disappeared a few days later. Shuzen thought that Okiku had run away, and was so angry that he sent his subordinates, the Yoriki and Doshin, to look for her. Shuzen was in charge of fire and theft prevention at the time. However, Okiku's whereabouts were unknown. In the meantime, one of the house members found the straw sandals that Okiku had been wearing near the old well in the back and brought them to him. Shuzen was glad that he had not killed her with his own hands, and reported to the public office that Okiku had died of illness. The poor woman disappeared from Shuzen's house and was left in the same state. But in May of that year, the lady gave birth to a boy who was missing his right middle finger. The lady remembered Okiku's finger when she saw it, and her blood rose. Then, from that night on, a woman's voice was heard from the roof of the birthplace. And from the vicinity of the old well, a voice was heard counting objects, one, two, three. When it reached nine, it turned into a crying voice. There were also blue ghost fires coming out of the well, and some said they saw the figure of a thin woman with her long black hair, disheveled floating over the well. In Shuzen's house, they were afraid, and had their representatives visit various temples and mountains to get protection tags pray for protection, and ask priests and mountain priests for prayers, but the strange phenomenon did not stop. As a result, Shuzen was dismissed from his duties due to mismanagement of his household affairs. And the house was abruptly cut off as he was put under the care of his relatives. And the residence was left unattended and became a wasteland. It was Ryoyo, the chief priest of Denzuin, who released Okiku's spirit. Wow, that was quite a story, wasn't it? The tale of Bancho Sariyashiki is a poignant reminder of the rich and complex tapestry that makes up Japanese folklore. We hope you enjoyed this reading as much as we enjoyed sharing it with you. If you're intrigued and want to explore more tales from Japan's folklore, 
Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon, so you'll never miss an episode. Until next time, keep exploring the world of stories.